Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. What's big black and made of U-boat steel? Well, it's the Zin U2S S for Schwartz. This black German diving bell for your wrist. Big, bold, and brash, but functional to a fault, can be seen and purchased on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full listing for this DLC tegumented steel timepiece constructed from German U-boat steel, no less. 2,000 meters water resistant and tank tough, despite the nautical associations. This is one that'll please enthusiasts of German sports watches, perhaps one of the last great undiscovered niches in horology. And I say undiscovered because, let's face it, when most people think German watches, Glossuta Original, which is abandoned to the sports watch, and Lange, perhaps the foremost luxury watch brand in Germany, neither one of them can be considered leaders in sports watch thought or design. Zinn, on the other hand, is absolutely among the world's foremost in both innovations and value. The watch on my wrist, whether you want to call it the EZM5, the U2S, or as I'm sure Germans would be more inclined to describe it, the 1040 4392 is a hell of a watch for the money and competes with ultra lux dive options, multiples of its price. In terms of the fit, it's actually surprisingly compliant on a small wrist, which is to say 51 millimeters lug to lug, it doesn't overwhelm my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Rather, it sits fairly planted and there's very little flare or fight in the bracelet. It can be pulled straight down around the wrist. So it wears true to size, 51 across the wrist. It is thick, make no mistake, this one's not gonna hide under a cuff. It's 16.1 millimeters thick. It's also remarkably Year. That case flank is vertical. Then again, this is not the style of watch to be worn discreetly underneath apparel. In terms of actual dimension across the case from 9 to 3, it measures a true 44 millimeters, since the crown itself is offset at 430 to avoid digging the wrist, as well as to afford it an extra measure of protection despite the absence of cumbersome crown guards. The timepiece is very solid. Solid case back, solid walls, an immense 4.3 to 4.5 millimeter sapphire, so robustly thick. You can see it even creates some of the distortion effects of a plexi because it is so physically massive. The bracelet appears slightly Nautilus inspired in its profile with its H profile primary links and intermediates, but it is a tough piece and you'd imagine there must be some fraternity of ultra niche sports watch enthusiasts who simply adore the fact that the sizing screws for the removable links are hex style. Again, nice to see the value here. Those could easily have been pins and sleeves given the price point. The clasp is simple but strong, and though I believe the tegumented steel effect applies only to the case itself, the quality of the coating used on this watch is extraordinary. Though this is not a new watch, the typical high impact point of any pre-owned watch, the clasp, appears completely unmarred. And you'll note small adjustments possible via strap tool, three incremental micro-sizing positions in the clasp itself. Uh, the bracelet is simple, functional, tough. The case, however, is far more than that. Physically massive and constructed of the same steel used for German Navy class 212 submarines, Zinn swears that it is mechanically exceptional and not simply 316 steel. That said, I can't vouch. What I can, however, is that the effect of the tegumented steel, a face hardening similar to colsterizing that uses a heat treatment, and then the DLC coating over that absolutely works. What they claim, which is that the steel beneath the coating is uncompressible, therefore the coating, which after all is diamond-like carbon, doesn't compress and crack. The flaw in traditional DLC coated watches being that the steel underneath the rock hard coating is compressible and therefore moves under impact, allowing the layer itself, which is extremely hard but brittle, to compress, crack, and fracture. Here, because of the tegumenting process that's applied to the steel before coating, there's nothing underneath the diamond-like carbon to compress and weaken the coating. Therefore, you get the full benefit of what is, after all, diamond-like in its hardness. And you'll note, despite all of the many 
common contact points where coated watches start to chip, fracture, and scratch. This watch shows almost no marks. I'm trying to be as revealing as possible here, admitting it is a pre-owned watch, but at the same time struggling to find any flaw. So Zinn, I'm willing to accept your claims regarding hardness, scratch, and scuff resistance. The bezel is physically massive. We may as well start with the story of its attachment. As you'll note, there are lateral screws placed in. This is what's known as a captured bezel, rather than the snap-on type that you'll find on Omega and Rolex, which often under tough use are simply snapped off, you actually must dismantle this bezel, first removing the screws and then lifting it off. It's constructed much like a Breitling bezel and a good deal tougher than a snap type. The detent is meaty and substantial, although it does have a little bit of refinement about it. I didn't think a German mechanism would be raw. It has the satisfying mechanical quality, but it's almost like there's a dull thunk, 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 rather than snap, snap, snap as you advance it. The knurling is huge, so you'll have no trouble gaining purchase on this bezel when your hands are wet, sweaty, or gloved. You'll line the oversized luminescent index with the oversized broadsword style luminescent hands, and you can get a quick zero to 60 minute timer. I prefer this to a mechanical chronograph. First of all, many chronograph watches don't even feature an hour register if they're bi-compacts. Second, I find it's easier to just read a zero to 60 minute radial countdown. For instance, when I'm timing intervals remaining in a test or whatever, it's easier to simply read a huge hand against a radial scale. And moreover, you'll find that most of what you time with a mechanical chronograph with an actual stopwatch is short in duration. You don't need more than 60 minutes. And for most, a dive bezel will be the best chronograph ever created. You also don't have the downstream service costs when the chronograph goes back to the manufacturer for work. This is the best solution for most. The dial is no nonsense. White on black print with a matte finish to reduce glare. The red is there for light contrast, so you can read the 24-hour format second time zone hand. That's what that is. You can see it's red index right against a 24-hour format. And then there is a counterweighted Lancet-style seconds hand with a quirky intermediate stripe of Luminova so you can easily discern it against the backdrop of the dial rather than having it muddled against the indices at night. You'll see it in the loom shot at the end of the video. It's quite distinct and easy to spot. Now there's a small aperture at 6 o'clock. It's not a date. It's not an AM PM. The date is discreetly hidden at 3 on a monotone black disc. This is actually a copper sulfate capsule and there are three technologies that help to keep this watch free of humidity internally. The first you'll note is the image ghosted onto the dial AR. Now that's the periodic table symbol for argon, but what's actually used is nitrogen. Once argon, Zinn now uses a nitrogen fill, an inert gas that effectively displaces moisture from the inside of the watch. They have a special seal that's more aggressive and airtight, uh, acting both as an oxygen barrier and as a moisture barrier so that moisture can't enter. But worst comes to worst, you'll note that aperture again. That is the copper sulfate tapsul tablet. It's a capsule that effectively removes moisture and it darkens as it absorbs moisture. It starts bleached white. So you can see this is a brand new copper sulfate tablet and over time it will not just let you know that moisture has intruded in the watch, it will actively remove it. So in some ways like the original Blancpain 50 Fathoms military watches with their internal moisture display, but this one actually has the ability to remove the moisture actively. Uh, the movement is an ETA 28932. Precise, tough, bi-directional winding with a 42-hour power reserve. You can pull the crown to extremity and hack it or stop the seconds to synchronize, but you can also pull it to an intermediate position, and now you can adjust the 24-hour hand independently. Note that you can actually hide it underneath <laughs> the hour hand, not permanently because one is moving at half speed and one is moving at full speed, but you can briefly disguise it for the sake of aesthetics. The bigger feature that I want to call attention to is the fact that you have a conventional quick set for the date in spite of the fact that you have that second time zone. Oftentimes on second time zone GMT style watches like a Rolex GMT Master 2, you have to advance the date by advancing the hour hand. Here you can simply advance the hour hand or advance the date to quick set. They separate the functions so you don't lose any of the features of the caliber. The watch beats weigh at 28,800 vibrations per hour. It is a tank tough movement for a tank tough watch. And I know you want to see the case back, though there's not much to see, attesting to the U-boat lineage of this watch. This is a timepiece that is as much a diving bell for the wrist as a submarine. Solid, 
seemingly impenetrable, it feels like it'll last ages, beautifully made, a fantastic value, and a refreshing alternative to the usual suspects in the Swiss sports watch class, you can see this Zin U2S EZM5 Mission Timer and purchase it on our website. We're back, back in black, the black of night with the Zin U2S EZM5. You can see robustly luminescent, the oversized index, particularly well chosen to align with the broadsword style minute hand. And you'll note that intermediate slash on the seconds hand migrating just inboard of the hour track, so it's easy to distinguish between the two. See it by the light of day, beautiful in black, on our website.